Eugene Harold Krabs is the owner and boss of The Krusty Krab, a restaurant from the Nickelodeon TV show SpongeBob SquarePants. He is the boss of SpongeBob, but his motivations lie not with the well-being of his employees, himself, or even his business, but instead all lie in one domain, the simple area of money. He is absolutely obsessed with money, bills, coins, any sort of payment. He conserves it beyond belief and goes to psychologically damaging lengths to get even the smallest amount of change. Why does he do this? Is his greed caused by an obsession with the status lots of money grants you? Is it an obsession with maintaining a large amount of savings? Or is it quite simply the physical money itself? This is the question I really want an answer to because I've been able to successfully crack the psychology of each SpongeBob character I've analyzed so far, except him. I've diagnosed Patrick with identity dissociation, Mrs. Puff with paranoid insanity, and Squidward with obsessive depression but Eugene Krabs needs his day in court. I need to give one long-winded diagnosis of whatever he's got going on in that bewildering noggin. This is Eugene Krabs, the foolish miser that will go to very severe lengths to protect his money. He is delusional at times. He treats the physical bills as if they are conscious entities deserving of pampering and worship. This is a delusion, an obsessive one. Whether it be the idea of money or the objects that are money, this crab believes it deserves its own status as the best thing that exists. Injuring others is fine if it's in the service of money. People mean nothing to him, they are all just the means to money. In one episode he sold Spongebob's soul for 62 cents, if I recall. Spongebob and Squidward are paid illegally low, he loves his daughter, and maybe his mother, that's it. Everybody else can burn for all he cares, but that slight familial love, it brings a restriction, a maximum, to his heartlessness. Almost every episode contains his monetary endeavors, so I can't go into every example, but you get the point. Mr. Krabs is a very greedy crustacean, so why, psychologically? First of all, Mr. Krabs is not a psychopath or a sociopath. He genuinely cares for Pearl and yes, often does consider the well-being of some people, so long as money has absolutely nothing to do with the situation. In terms of nature, he does seem to have inclinations towards a personality of status, though not even remotely to the extent of whatever we see in the show. He doesn't appear to be overall insane or delusional either, just selectively crazy when it comes to a single topic. There is a very simple reason for this. Mr. Krabs has personified money and is in love with the concept of it. Mr. Krabs is literally in love with money. Or at least he thinks he is. This love is obsessive and continually goes so far that he loses sight of the fact that money is not sentient or conscious, let alone sapient or even reciprocal. He is delusional in the highest order and blinded by love with his obsession. He likely fears that the money is cheating on him by being owned by others. If you can find examples of all his romantic attachments to money in the episodes, do tell me below. But what could be a cause of this obsession? Well, I think Mr. Krabs had trouble forming healthy bonds as a child, and upon antagonizing his only friend, Plankton, he fell into the pit of high-key objectophilia. Mr. Krabs is on every possible level in love with money, romantically, intellectually, obsessively, and it's all overlaid with severe delusion. If I remember correctly, I do believe Mr. Krabs was partially raised by a pirate family as a child. This understandably would result in the possibility of a failure to form complete relationships, a sort of childhood instilled attachment disorder which psychologically is exactly the sort of thing known to develop into obsessive love disorder. So, Mr. Krabs was partially raised in a setting that made it difficult for him to form proper relationships, which led to some attachment disorders and an overall obsessive love disorder seasoned with objectophilia. He lost his only true friend to business conflict and was left to love the single remaining thing that brought his childhood any pleasure, the rewarding outcome of business, money. 
But why exactly did he love money as a physical thing to begin with? Before we go through all of the examples I can think of off the top of my head to prove all these diagnoses, I must look into the very moment Mr. Krabs became attracted to money during his childhood, because this isn't a greed thing anymore. Mr. Krabs, I think, is designed to mimic a pirate. He's got the accent, he's got the money 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 ack 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 He's got the whole pointy peg leg things going on makes sense seeing as how he was raised partially by pirates. But the obsession goes far deeper than pillaging. At least most of the time he gets his money legally through his business, but pirates are greedy not obsessive. And he didn't truly understand money until his job with Plankton. No. At first the money intrigue was likely to compensate for being poor, or simply because of being related to pirates. An intrigue. An intrigue that spiraled. So. Mr. Krabs has an objectophilic attachment to money out of compensation for his pirated childhood and loss of plankton. It is so severe that it is delusional, religious, and nearly some form of far-gone obsessive love disorder. Cool. Let's find some examples of his limits. So up until this point, I've literally been presuming that he was poor, but I can confirm that, yes, in another backstory episode of his, he is indeed in need of money. Clearly some elements of his greed were spawned by this upbringing, leading to the literal addiction of keeping all the money he makes at all costs. In the episode Clams, he goes to extreme lengths to get a single dollar, endangering Spongebob and Squidward via starvation and utilization as literal bait. In Krabby Land, he builds an extremely dangerous theme park, careless towards the injuries children may face. All for a little more money. He uses Gary as a money attractor in The Scent of Money, much to everyone's abused dismay. To protect his money and business, he goes to severe lengths by spying on his staff, inserting himself into their lives, and he even poisons the health inspector in the Nasty Patty episode. He notoriously underpays his staff. I even tried doing a general calculation of how much income he makes back when I narrated the videos with a robotic voice. It's a lot of money. And the staff get none of it. He forces them all to work far too much and gives them nothing in return. I do believe that at one point Spongebob pays Eugene for the supposed privilege of working. Squidward is too depressed to do anything, as we all know very well, but Krabs preys on Spongebob's naivety. His whole establishment is far too cheap and he does anything he can to save money. It's a disgusting restaurant filled to the brink with health code violations which I'm sure can and will now be researched. He's robbed graves, plotted mass schemes in cold blood like the ectothermic crusty crustacean he is, and the theft. Good God, he steals more and more, but not necessarily in a kleptomanic sort of way. In short, as you can see, Mr. Krabs is seriously troubled. He was raised half by pirates, who are stereotypically fond of money, and half in poverty, which led to an overall strong fixation with money. When he started his business with Plankton, this fascination evolved into a deeply greedy undertone, and when he and Plankton split, he turned to money out of comfort. In a life of being bullied for his poverty, Mr. Krabs saves his money and refuses to let it go. This comfort, greed, and necessity all push him over the deep end given time, and he begins to anthropomorphize money. This personification evolves into a subservience, a treatment of it as royalty. A bullied, poor, and pirated childhood that left him with attachment issues redirected its Himself at this newfound personification and pushed him into a state of obsessive love disorder mixed with objectophilia. Tragic. In my completely quasi-professional psychiatric opinion, Mr. Krabs and Plankton need to stabilize their relationship. Truly. Plankton only continues tormenting Krabs because he feels betrayed. A dime is worth more than their old friendship. Plankton is jealous, envious of the money he lacks. A love triangle of sorts. As I always do, I'll now put it into one compactly complex sentence. Mr. Krabs is a multi-millionaire cheapskate raised on attachment disorders, bullied poverty, and greed, all accumulating in objectophilia turns subserviently anthropomorphizing obsessive love disorder regarding the concept and physical content of money after losing his childhood friend due to business conflict. And that is my diagnosis of Mr. Krabs. Overall, you could say he has a money disorder, which is a real thing, but his goes to particularly bizarre areas, which I have now detailed. As you all may remember, I diagnosed Plankton's plan, dare I say, but I can add to it now with more details. Plankton is an attritional, rapid force, psychologically manipulative war mastermind of breakdown, locked in a loop of envy regarding his ex-friend's objectophilic fixations. As you can see, I'm bringing in all the videos for this one, the money calculations, the war strategies, and I'm sure Plankton has some sort of inferiority like Squidward too. 
If you have any more instances where Mr. Krabs does stuff noteworthy to fit this diagnosis, please comment it below. I could make a follow-up where I read the comments in a video and attempt to prove it deeper. I need to analyze specific situations from more episodes. In fact, even if you don't normally comment, just comment anything you can think up. Also, make sure to like the video that's quite important to YouTube's algorithm at the moment. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. I mean, even if you just sometimes watch me, it would be easier to subscribe, and it would help me better comprehend my own analytics. There are more SpongeBob diagnoses to come. Until next time, I'm The Theorizer.